So in 1968, the Olympics was hosted by Mexico, in Mexico City. Amen. I love the Olympic Games for one thing. There are some very inspirational stories, especially for the Paralympic Games. In 1968, Tanzania was represented. And you know during the Olympics, the final event is mostly the marathon days. So in that marathon, there was a man called John Stephen Aparo. Tanzania. John Stephen Aparo. You can note his name and read a bit more about him later. So he competed in the marathon race on behalf of Tanzania. And it was a 42 kilometer race. 42 kilometers. There were 75 athletes that began the race. 75. So in about the 19 kilometer stretch. John hit his leg to the pavement and he fell. He fell badly, dislocated his knee in the process. 19 kilometers out of 42 kilometers. So many thought John would give up and stop. As a matter of fact, the one who came first in that race spent a little over two hours. John completed the race in over three hours. So between the one who came first and John, there was over an hour difference. Amen. I told you 75 athletes began the race. In the end, 57 of them completed, including John. John was the last man to complete. When he entered the stadium, the stadium was almost empty. In fact, the camera guys were parking. We can watch the video on YouTube later. The camera guys were all parking. John was virtually limping when he crossed the finish line. So the few people in the stadium gave him a standing ovation. And the camera guys had to come back to interview him. And what John said, what John said etched his name in the history of the Olympic Games. Amen. This is what John said. He said, My country did not send me 5,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish the race. Amen. You hear that? My country did not send me 5,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish the race. Amen. I'm talking to you this morning about finishing the race. Tell a friend, finishing the race. Amen. This Christian journey should count for something. Amen. And the, the easiest thing to do is starting the race. What is most difficult is finishing the race. Amen. Yeah. And I said the Christian journey should count for, for something. But there should be a reason why you are a Christian. Amen. There should be a reason why you are a Christian. Why you have to be here every Sunday. You have to be here during the week for prayer services and all of that. Why you deny yourself the pleasures of this world? There should be a reason for that. Amen. And I believe the, the, the utmost reason should be that we spend time in eternity with our maker. That we make it to heaven. If you have any other reason, then you have to get out of this room. This Christian journey should come for something. And that's why Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3, 13 to 14, that, brothers, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, 
and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that's Apostle Paul speaking. And the conviction is clear. Amen. Know that your, your, your time on earth, your life on earth is captured within time. And that's why when you get to the cemetery today, you would find Kojo Mensa, 1914 to 1950. So that was his time on earth. And his life is captured in that time. So within that time, you should know why you are on this earth. And the purpose God placed you on this earth. The difficulty is that when you die today, there is judgment. So in Hebrews Paul said, and as it is appointed for men to die once, and after death, judgment. And that's why your time on earth should be very, very important to you in this Christian journey. Because when you die today, there is no second chance. Amen. When you die today, there is no second chance. So you will have to finish the race and finish it well. If after everything on earth, you die and go to hell, it will be the greatest service to your time on earth. Amen. It is appointed for man once to die, and after death, judgment. So when you die, when you have finished the race well, and that should be the biggest question you ask yourself this morning. So the question then is, how do I finish the race well? And I will share some very important nuggets with you. How do I finish the race well? Number one, always think eternity. Amen. Always think eternity. Your mindset should be that this world is not my home. We are in transit on earth. And that is why you should not focus so much on earthly things. Amen. Have that mindset that our citizenship in heaven is in heaven, sorry. So in Philippians 3, 20, Paul said, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Have that mindset. Now we are only passing through. Think eternity. Know that there is always a reward in having that mindset. Thinking eternity. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with human hands, eternal in the heavens. That should be your mindset. We are only passing through. And you know the secret is, even Jesus thought about eternity. Even Jesus had that mindset. He had to focus on what was set before him. So the Bible says, he then endured the cross. If you read Hebrews 12, 1 to 2, And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Eternal thing. So Jesus had this mindset. 
For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. So elsewhere, the Bible says, for this reason, he's been given a name above all other names. That at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee bows. Amen. Amen. So that's, that's the glory associated with the endurance. The mindset should change. Think eternity. And I remember when we were young, growing up, especially for those of us who have single parents, said, if you are there, I cry, I will say, oh, I'm here, you will be able And after that prayer, I'm going to count something. Amen. So I came to realize that at the mention of the name Jesus, every trouble, every challenge would have to bow. Once the challenge has got a name, it has to come under the name Jesus. Amen. So if there is unemployment, it's a name. And at the mention of the name Jesus, unemployment will have to do what? Bow. So, for the glory set before him, Jesus endured the cross. Think eternity. And that's the only way you can finish this race and finish well. Think eternity. We are just passing through this world. And there is a city somewhere in the heavens. Amen. And let me issue this statement. Thinking eternity doesn't also mean you should be disconnected from the world. No. God placed you on this earth for a purpose. Amen. So you should be an ambassador of Christ on earth. And Jesus in the modern prayer told his disciples, that when you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom what? Come. And he says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in God's mind, he would want his will in heaven to be done on earth. And we are the agents of Christ on earth. Amen. So you cannot live a life disconnected from this world. No. So Jesus said, you are the light of the world. That is impact. Amen. So you have to impact your world. When, when your name is mentioned, something should hit the mind of the people around you. Amen. When your name is mentioned at your workplace, Something should hit the minds of your working colleagues. Impact. You are the light of the world. So don't just exist on earth. Live. Don't just exist. Live. Live and impact. I told you your life on earth is captured in time. Amen. So yes, think eternity. But again, know that you were placed on this earth for a purpose. And Paul says, for we know that all things work together for good to them without God, and to the called according to his purpose. So there is a reason why God crossed you over to the year 2021. In part, your word. You are the light and the salt of this earth. Amen. So think eternity. And with that, you can finish this race well. Number two, love God and be passionate about the things of God. Amen. Love God and be passionate about the things of God. So in Romans 8.35, Paul said, 